Hello everybody, this is me, Amin. And it's Alex. And welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About N. Well, 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 <laughs> what has happened? So today is the 1st of uh, September, Thursday. Uh, I don't think it's too late for us to wish uh, everybody a happy National Day, happy Merdeka, happy Malaysia Day and happy National Month. Um, so, if you recall, uh, in our previous Let's Talk About episode, we were talking about the progress of 5G in Malaysia. And one of the points of discussion was the deadline set by our finance minister, Tengku Zafro. He mentioned that um, operators must sign the share agreement, the equity agreement, uh, by 31st of December. That means they have to buy a stake. Or, uh, sorry, they have to agree to buy a stake in the MB by the 31st of August. August, or they or risk or not risk, or they will see all the operators will see that f- there are foreign telcos lining up to invest in the NB, so they will miss the so great opportunity to sign up with the NB. So I think we will refresh your memory on what we talked about. We've been able to kind of like give you like a really in depth perspective on what's going on with five G currently. And unfortunately, there's really not much good news to report. We're not making progress, um, and hopefully, things will change. Yeah, for me, the the biggest sign will be telcos make an announcement that yes, we have finally signed the Wi-Fi access offer, yep. and this is when we're going to roll out five G. Yep. Until today, we haven't seen that yet. So but that, that, that yeah. that's not going to happen anytime soon. Not yep. in two weeks. Yes, not, not in two, two weeks. weeks. Definitely yeah. not in two weeks. Not even by the end of this year, I think. <sighs> I'm gonna put I'm gonna put some money down ten ten <laughs> ten ringgit that it's not gonna happen by the end of this year. Okay, so now one day after thirty first, what happened? Yeah, so like remember um our communication minister uh, Tan Sri Anumusa said mm. that oh everything's according to the plan the six telcos are on board yep. and then they will sign the, the, he said that MCMC were going to agree a few terms on twenty nine August uh-huh. and the telcos will sign on thirty first August which is our national day. Yep, and what happened? Well. On the day before, I was searching through all the announcements on, uh-huh. on the internet, right? Yep. Bursa Malaysia, because obviously it should be such a big deal. Mm. Public listed telcos, we make, we will definitely make a grand announcement to the shareholders. They, despite okay, it's not even a grand. They have to. They are required by law to make an announcement to report any movement or investment to the bursa. Yes. Uh-huh. And on 30th, nothing mm. happens. So, okay, maybe there's a signing ceremony on 31st of August. <laughs> maybe, I don't know, at Datoran Merdeka or, or something. Wow. And nothing happened. Uh-huh. And what's interesting is after, I think about 1 or 2 o'clock, uh, Reuters uh, issued a report mm. saying that Maxis, according to sources, mm. Maxis and New Mobile have decided not to proceed with equity deal. Mm. So two major telcos pulled out and the reason they do that is because yep. they find no benefit being a minority shareholder in Digital National Berhad. Yeah. Uh, okay, so okay, um, just a few technical terms here. They didn't pull out. They declined. Yeah. They declined to, to sign. And why why is it interesting is, number one, is I think we, in this show, let's talk about, if you've been following the podcast, I think you'll notice that a lot of things that have been said in this podcast usually happens. I think, I don't know, it's it's not us predicting the future, but we look at the data points, look at the, the what's going on and all the movements. We kind of like know where things are going. And in our previous episode, we said that the signing is not going to happen. But despite that, you know, us being diligent and checking the facts and everything, we will still, Alex was still trying to be ready to see if there was any surprise announcement made by the telco or the government because our mencom and our finance minister was so confident to say that telcos will sign. Yep. Uh, mencom said, oh, telcos are on board. Uh, finance minister gave telco an ultimatum to sign or be left behind. And now we see, um, we, we got information from Reuters that sources say that Maxis and, and New Mobile pulled out. And today on the 1st of September, New Mobile, Issued a statement, yep. an official statement. Be, but before that, uh, DMB also issued a statement yesterday evening as well to confirm that they to confirm declined. Not sorry, not pulled out. Sorry, declined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. But because okay, uh, let me just read the statement here. Right. So according to DMB, right, the execution of the share subscription agreement mm. SSA between the telcos and DMB was supposed to be concluded on the 30th of August <laughs> on Tuesday. So it's uh, it's actually they, they said that it has been finalized and ready to be executed by the six telcos. 
But there was a last minute change decision by two telcos, which they did not name, but mm. we already know who they are. Mm. Uh, they said that one of the telcos decided not to proceed, mm. while the other had not responded, mm. despite their confirmation to participate earlier. That's okay. what DMB said. And according to that, right, because of these new developments, mm. so DMB now has to revise the transaction documents, the SSA, the oh, shareholders agreement, to allow the security subscription to be four telcos instead of six. Ah, uh, so the delay now is not caused by DNB lah. It's yeah. by the telcos. Yeah, I said, hey, you know, we agree already, We're bro. ready to go. We're, We're ready to go. Why yeah. you last minute? Why you phone faking me? Yeah, now the paper are done already now. Yeah. Wasted already. You see, I'm making documents. Uh. I have to make a lot, you know. Six people, you know. That's right. Now, not easy. Now to go, no, to, to do tin up then. I need to change the documents, everything, the four, and then amount also the change. So how? <laughs> so it it seems like a joke, right? But on the... On in between the lines, this is this is what I feel uh, Okay, in between the lines, they're saying like, okay, we're ready to go. Five G is ready to go. Um, telcos are pulling out. So the problem is, you know, it's not like the government is not ready to roll out five G. We have a operator signed up. We have set up DNB. We believe in single wholesale network, but operators are dragging their feet. Mm-hmm. That's what the narrative feels like to me to the yep. public. And I think why is it important for us to talk about it is because that narrative is, I don't know, I want to say, okay, that narrative is BS. It's not true. Um, we've, we've spoken to telcos and it's not that telcos don't want 5G in the country. It's the implementation of 5G in the country that is that, that telcos disagree. And it's not like telcos are shutting the door. So let's separate the two things here. Declining to sign the SSA, it's not the same as not uh, it's not the same as not subscribing to DNB services. Yeah, so just to make it clear, uh, getting equity in DNB is like owning a share in DNB mm. and getting access as, as in actually getting the 5G services to yep. offer the customers, that's a separate deal. I think we discussed that previously in a previous video. Yep. There is the um, equity deal mm. and the wholesale service agreement. Yep. So both of them have two different issues mm. and you know, there's this are two things we're going to talk about. Yeah, it is... It is it is two separate things, but it is also easy to confuse the two and, and think that the two are interrelated. Some In some instances, in some way, the two are related because telcos are saying, okay, if you want me to subscribe, I would like a stake because I want to have some degree of control in what I'm subscribing to. That's number one. Number two is, uh, I think the biggest point of contention is the 10-year lock down in terms of the pricing of data. And that hasn't been sorted. I think that's one of the biggest point of contention. So now, what's, what's going to happen after this, right? So two telcos. One has confirmed that they pulled, uh, they've declined. Maxis is still being quiet. I don't know whether they're paying, playing safe or they're just saying, look, there's really nothing for us to talk about right now. We didn't agree that we will be signing. We didn't disagree. Uh, DNB has been talking. Uh, I don't know on whose behalf. So I think it's smart for Maxis to just be quiet. Uh, you know, if I know Maxis, I think the, the board of directors, the shareholders, the CEO, they are not to say relaxed, but they're not as um, there's no urgency to, to respond. No, yeah. They, yeah, there's not. They are not as knee jerk as I'm not. I'm not saying Newable is, but maybe the the directors, the shareholders, and the CEO has other things so that they need to do to to that they feel that they have to make this announcement. I mean, it's also safe for them not to not to go out and make an announcement. But I don't know why uh, strategically that they felt that they had to make an announcement. But it's already confirmed that they have. It, it seems to me like, okay, this announcement cements their position that they're not going to spend that amount of money in for an equity in DNB. But the way I look at it is that the reason why they made the announcement is to make it very clear that one agreement is not the same as the other agreement. Just because they're not accepting the equity deal in DNB mm. doesn't mean they don't want to roll out 5G. Mm. They can still roll out 5G with the access agreement because that was the original plan all along. Yep. So remember when DNB was first formed, it was supposed to be 100% owned by government. The government will... We will come up with investment to build a network. You, the rest of us don't need to spend so much money on, mm. the, on, the, on, the, on the network, mm. a zero capex member. Yeah. <laughs> and then you just focus on you know renting access from DMB and serve your customers. Mm. So originally, it was supposed to be 100% owned by the government under yep. the Ministry of Finance. Mm. And of course, we know end of last year, there's a lot of pushbacks from Telco. And then the Telcos actually come and propose, let's have a dual wholesale network instead mm. to have a company network. Then after much uh, deliberation, the government in March decided, you know what? The government decided that single wholesale network is the way to go. But to ensure that your interests are protected and you're involved in the, the building of the network, they're going to offer 70% share to the telcos. So that was what happened. Mm. And of course, 
I think a few months later, I think other people forgot that um, um, there was this report uh, by Reuters as well. So, so apparently the four telcos, the big telcos, Cellcom, DG, Maxis, U-Mobile, have written in to the government telling them that you know they want to be an influential shareholder in DMB mm. because they're seeking at least a combined 50%, 51% equity mm. in the company and they won't have a say in what goes on. Mm. And of course, Tengu Zafru, the next, I think in the interview with Straits Times, shot down the idea and said, nope, no, we, we yeah. won't, you can't have major share. The government will have the full control. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, yeah, I agree with that. But the thing is, maybe the viewers are ask, is asking, right? So if if you're saying that U-Mobile is saying, okay, they're not going to put money, but they're still going to subscribe to the service, why are they not subscribing to the service now? Like how YTL is doing? I think one of the biggest issues right now, I think even before this equity deal was, on, was a huge topic, is that the reference access offer, the wholesale pricing for 5G. Mm. Um, I think we mentioned this before, the telcos raised concern that the current reference access offer, basically mm. the document that de- de- determines the actual 5G pricing, mm. quality service, tra- the, the whole terms and condition, mm. does not ensure quality and affordable 5G services to the right yet. Because mm. one of the biggest issues was the pricing. Uh, as we discussed, DMB is charging telcos 30,000 ringgit per gigabits per second per month mm. to the telcos for 5G access. Mm. And that's very expensive. And it's locked to a 10-year period. Yep. So if you, want, if you want to get 5G services, it has to be affordable. Yep. So that doesn't seem to be affordable at all. So that's one of the reasons why all the telcos are refusing to sign. So I think, right, um, I, what's going to happen in the... What's going to happen... What's going to happen after this? Uh, and we talked about, like, okay, why Maxis didn't announce anything, why U-Mobile didn't announce anything, what is the stance? So we kind of... We also explained that, you know, okay, it's 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 very clear that U-Mobile doesn't want to pay, but they're still trying to be pragmatic about it and say, okay, you know, I'm going to subscribe, but, you know, there are underlying issues while that is not being said in the statement, um, it's clear because we know the movements, right? What's going to happen after this? Um, it seems like every, the nobody's budging, mm-hmm. but it, it feels to me that the telcos have more leverage. Uh, and it seems to me that what Maxis and New Mobile has done is a clear indication of what the other four telcos w- may do, uh, given maybe maybe two two other telcos, uh, I think TM and and yes, to a certain degree, will fall in line, mm-hmm. but it is a significant amount of money, two hundred million ringgit, right? That's assuming that the deal was twelve percent. But now, since there's no longer two telcos, so there's now four, right? There's four. So mm. if you look at the stake, seventy percent divided by four, that's about seventy point five percent. So the 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 the, the percentage of inti- uh, equity is higher. <laughs> What's the maths on that? How so, much is it going to cost? So then? previously they need to invest two hundred million to get mm. uh, like a twelve percent stake. Now mm. to seventy point five, they probably got to fork out three hundred million each. So they need to think twice. I need to spend much more to take equity, equity stake. And what am I getting from this? Mm. Why are they going to benefit from this? Mm. They're probably going to pay more. Um, but it is to me what it means is that okay, telcos now have more have leverage. Uh, government. Setting deadlines and pushing it back, pushing it back, pushing it back only goes to show. And the more, the more deadlines they push back, right, only gives more power to the operators. And also makes the DMB and the government look very bad. It make them look really stupid. <laughs> I mean, for the lack of a better word. Okay, you know the, the ultimatum. Yeah. Finance minister puts out an ultimatum and say, "Oh, f- uh, foreign investors are coming." In. I mean, what kind of BS is that? Uh, and the man comes saying, "Oh, we're on track. We're on track. What track?" What track if the deadline keeps moving? When are Malaysians going to be... Okay, If I I, I think that's not a good question because uh, when are Malaysians going to be able to access uh, 5G? I mean, they, the minister is going to say, oh, you know... You can uh, subscribe to you Yes what? Subscribe to Yes now. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. But for me, it's like this. Like, you know, um, what's, ins- what's insanity? Insanity is, you know... Doing, doing the same thing and expecting different results. Yeah, and okay, first of all, right, the, mm. when the when DMB issued the reference access offer, mm. the pricing in the terms, right, the targets really said, you know, we have concerns about this. Yes. These are concerns that have been raised way yep. beforehand to MCMC. Yep. And yet... Do this uh, this concern not addressed. Been addressed. Yep. And then in May, the telcos really told the finance ministry is that you know it does not make sense for them to invest if they don't have like a majority stake. You know it mm. doesn't make sense for them. Yep. And then I just want to uh, read a, a, a statement that's uh, cited by the by Reuters. It said that the telcos told the, the ministry of finance said that we will not be able to justify a passive minority investment in this venture without being able to exercise influence and control to safeguard our investment. 
So yeah. they already told them upfront, you know, my mistake we can't do. I mean, it's fair. Yeah. I buy a share. I want to say, put me in the board, uh, have me in management positions or whatever, so that the interest of my company uh, is protected. And we are able to uh, build a network that can give the best services to my customers. Yep. I mean, it's fair. Yep. I think it's a win-win. The government gets the money and the telcos get to provide the services. My question is, why is the government reluctant? Yep. So, by the way you look at it, right, it's like they know why the telcos will not want to sign up. Mm. They know the telcos, why the telcos will not want to sign this equity deal. Mm. But yet, they keep pushing the deadlines to them and say, like, please sign. But how yeah. to sign? You really know why they wouldn't sign. So what's the end game here? I mean, what do you think? What's going to happen? To me, it's like, okay, the the next thing that's going to happen is that from DMB side, they're going to revise the the are they the going deal. to or do they have I mean are you saying going to like they are going to do it they have to do it they have to do the equity uh, for deal. this for this to move right for this for, they prepare the documents as for but whether the four telcos are willing to sign off with the increased investment that's another question altogether obviously not like for example look at okay another thing is about okay look at uh, Secom DG mm. so I assume that they're one of the four players mm-hmm. because they didn't name them here mm. but okay assuming that each of them get 70.5% both of them once they merge they're going to have 35%, which is more than Ministry of Finance. If they don't have influence and say, mm. like, what why? kind of shareholding is that? Yeah, why am I spending so much for 35%, but yet I don't have any say in these yep. things? And don't forget, they also have Teleno on board, a foreign investor. Mm. Will they agree to that? And Obviously uh, not. Yeah, and for me, if you look back, right, look at, uh, sorry, uh, looking at Maxis and U-Mobile, mm. right, they also have foreign investors. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure that the shareholders are not convinced. Yep. That's why they didn't sign up to this equity deal. Okay, number one, uh, I would, where I'm coming from is this. Uh, if if it was six before and nobody jumped to sign, I don't see a reason why now four that the telcos will sign. How, another thing, another question is, if let's say Tango Zavo said there's foreign telcos uh-huh. queuing up, right? Get them to sign. Get them to sign. Uh. Join in. Six Get telcos. Get them to sign now so that the telcos are afraid. Call, I mean, I, I don't know, man. You put out the card, or you put out the bluff. Yep. Now you have to prove lah, whether it's a bluff or not. Yeah, ask those people to come in to fill up the two empty seats. Then there will be more pressure. I think that if the foreign telcos really come in, right? Uh. You see, these people are taking a stake. Then they will feel the pressure. If his threat is real. Uh. If that happens, yep. uh, that, okay, that can only happen in, I foresee only one instance. And that that instance is when DNB significantly changes the terms of the equity shareholding, which means that the foreign players have a louder voice in the, in the entity. Yep. Which is like really dumb because that means the operators that care about Malaysians, which are the local operators, are, 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 being, cast are being cast aside for a foreign operator for whatever reason. Yep. And we don't know whether this operator is going to take care of our, pe- uh, our, our people, the subscribers. Because if for you to develop, a, to, for you to create a business here, and we talked about this in the previous episode, number one, if I'm a foreign business, number one, hey, okay, I want to come into Malaysia, please tell me what's the benefit. Yep. Do, I, do I get any tax breaks? Do I get any land to build my office? Do I get a building so that I don't have to pay for my offices? Okay, number two is, are there any other terms and conditions that I need to be aware of? So that's that's me as a foreign entity. Now, in Malaysia, if I'm not mistaken, for a foreign entity to come and invest in Malaysia, there has to be a, a, a local equity in there. And I think it's still, it's still 51%, if I'm not mistaken. So the foreign entity can only take 49%. And what foreign entity would want to take 49% in a company that doesn't have money, that, that is not proven that they have a good business model and is only available to provide 5G services? Yep. What is the return on investment for this foreign entity to do this? And take into account that we already have six telcos in the country, excluding NVNOs. And we talked about this before, right? South, uh, South Korea, um, a population that's almost double of Malaysia, only has two or three telcos. Yeah, most countries only three or three or four because you know they actually consolidate and all that. Yeah, we, we are we are in currently in a very saturated market right now. Yes. Why would they want to come in here? Too many operators, uh, working on a very small market. 
and you talk about foreign investors, right? We already have telcos having significant uh, foreign uh, interests. Like for example, uh, DG, which has you know strong backing from Telenor, mm. even U Mobile right now. He's I think forty nine percent owned by Straits Mobile Investments, which is like a subsidiary of Temasek Group in Singapore. Yep, yep. And yeah, yeah. We have, you know, Asiata that's uh, owning Cellcom, and Asiata is although it's mostly a local Malaysian, entity, yeah. but it's still a international company. Yeah. I guess my other question is, uh, okay, so we talked about. Uh, what happened after Tengku Zafrul's uh, ultimatum? Nobody yep. signed. Yep. Uh, actually, it's worse. Nobody signed, and two pulled out. Uh, and two declined. Yes, that's worse. Yeah. <laughs> so, so despite like, the ultimatum, it became worse. Yeah, and that even makes it less appealing for foreign telcos coming. Like, wait a minute, <laughs> Maxis is not signing. Yeah. Your mobile's not signing. Why should I sign? Yeah. yeah. And like we mentioned before, right? You know, DMB when it's formed, right, is mm. is said to be you know uh, a a uh, supply driven. A supply-driven approach yep. as cost recovery model. Yep. Why would an investor want to invest in a in a cost recovery model? Yep. Even going to high risk environment, it's supposed to be high returns. Yeah, it's a uh, it looks it looks to be like a terrible startup. Okay, so we talked about that, and then uh, we talked about what can happen after this, right? So we talked about like telcos are going to decline, more telcos are going to decline. We really don't see any foreign investment coming in. Um, n- not this year, not next year. Uh, and then now we we want to look into the crystal ball because I asked you the question right. So what? Why is the government still holding on to this 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 uh, single wholesale network? For me, is okay. Here's the thing: if the government truly wants this to to progress, so I wanted to move on from this, right? First of all, address the concerns. I mean, they can negotiate with the telcos because what we're seeing is that they are publicly attacking mm. the telcos. Hey, you don't sign this will happen, mm. and then they 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 kind of like demonizing the telcos. Like, oh, you know, 4G yes. was crap because of this this this. Yep. It's like I was going to be better. It's mm. like why would are you pissing off? Are, are you like pissing off or insulting the telcos when yeah. you should be working to them, working, working together, together with them yeah. to make sure this works? Yep. And you already hear the concerns. Mm. Try to meet halfway, mm. address the concerns because until today, right? I was expecting them to. Revise IO because the telco said thirty thousand is too expensive. Yep. It's locked to ten years. Yep. Come out a plan to mitigate these concerns. Yeah, uh, you're right. I think, I mean, if they still want to go with SWN, uh, I think Mancom can stop saying that it's on track. Stop giving uh, false deadlines. Yeah, finance minister should just keep quiet. Mancom should say, okay, we hear the concerns of the operators. We would like to make this an appealing environment for, not an uh, enticing environment for all the operators in the country for the benefit of all Malaysians. So we're going to li- re- re-look and re-study the, the, con- the, the concerns and, and what their requirements are and make sure that we meet, meet in the middle. That's a very, I think, logical answer, but for the so many times that he's been talking to the media, he has not said anything close to that. I don't think the government's engaging the telcos actively. It's like they're trying to bulldoze this down. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. Take it. Take it. Take it. I'm going to lose out. The funny part is the government cannot say that anymore because they are losing the leverage. Yep. The telcos feel like, hey, you know what? You can say whatever. My subscribers are still there. I'm yep. still providing services. I still have shareholders and I still have a business to run. Yep. Um, now, what could change is PRU comes in, GE comes in, uh, and the government is reshuffled again, and we'll get like our fourth government in 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 less than three years, and maybe our approach to five G could be different, possibly. Um, but that's gonna be at least six months. We don't know. PRU indicators are saying that it's going to happen this year. Again, I want to remind everybody, we're not like a political website or a political blog. Uh, sorry, website. We don't want to be one. It's just that this topic is so intertwined with current government and politicians that you know we can't help talking about it. These are the factors that are going to affect the outcome of 5G in the country. So the only way that we see that this is changing is if the government changes. Because this came about with the new government um so after pru uh maybe it changes so that's the optimistic outlook on the flip side if the current government wants this to go on address the concerns i i, I don't yeah. see that that happening uh i don't see that i, I seriously don't see that happen. i don't see any situation where that will happen i think it will i tell you why because right now uh dmb mm. they're still rolling out uh, according to plan in yesterday's statement, DMB says that they're still on track to hit the 80% coverage target by tr- end of 2024. They're still re- rolling out new sites as we speak. And those need fun. They can't slow that down. 
Yeah, but they've already paid the contractor and if they don't proceed, they're going to pay more to the contractor so they don't have a choice. Yeah, but the thing is, how are they, they, they going to get the money? Because right now, they have their own financing. They also have financing with Ericsson, the vendor financing and stuff. But the thing is, they still need customers on board to secure more financing. And they also want to issue bonds and all that. So without any customer on board, mm. they are going to be desperate. They need to secure funds as much as possible. And that's one of the reasons why they're rushing for the equity deal. Because each tackle had to put in like 200 million, now 300 million. The other flip side to that is they can just shut it down. If they want to. Yeah. yeah, And not pay anything. I mean, just pay some penalty la, to Ericsson or whatever. Yeah, but got, you know who's going to pay right? ultimately? It's us. the people. Yeah. So, and that, that brings me to this my other point. At the end of the day, um, whether PRU happens or not and whether it's going to take six months for the government to change and, and, and the ministers to change and, and for them to look into the 5G policy and whatever, right? At the end of the day, we come to this. We were one, not, not one, we were the leading nation in Southeast Asia for 5G deployment uh, about two years ago, not more than three years ago. Now we are behind Indonesia, Singapore, Vietnam, uh, Thailand. Thailand. I don't know. You want to talk about Myanmar and and, and other, I mean, don't even compare with those countries. Lah. Look, we were previously at least on par, if not ahead of Singapore in 5G deployment. Can you imagine that? And then who, and where we are now. So what's going to happen? Why I bring this up is that we we are going to be the victims. Lah. We, the yeah, people. People, the users, all of us, industries, yeah. everyone. Yeah. Okay, then you come back and say, oh, look, I don't need 5G. I'm happy with my 4G. Yes, you're right. We don't. We consumers don't need 5G. Who needs 5G? You know who needs 5G? EV people, right? We need 5G in the electric charging stations so that they can provide information quickly. They're all connected so that the car, we need 5G in cars. We need 5G in buses, in planes, in, in, in everything so that everything is connected so that the roads can be safer. The traffic light knows... How many cars in real time that can save you time and money by reducing traffic congestions? I, you know, I, let's not even talk about like the implementation of 5G in hospitals, in, in, in yeah. industry, in automation. That is where, you know, you know how the government talks about IoT 4.0, whatever, all that BS, right? This is where the rubber hits the road. Without this, right, it will not unlock anything. Yep. It will not unlock anything. And we are fortunate because right now, a lot of the countries that have deployed 5G, they have not fully realized the potential of 5G. The, IO, the IoT stuff, the interconnected interconnected world uh, between devices have not like fully realized yet, even in the States or even in Korea, Korea yeah. or China. It's still very consumer-driven. But... Once you discover the killer app. Uh, yeah, once it's ready, yep. the network is ready. Yep. Now we don't have a network. Once they are ready, we are now at least five years behind. Yep. And 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 that's why we're talking about this. And that's why, again, I don't want to sound like a campaign, but you need to think about this when uh, GE happens or or every time you hear Mancom and, and, and Finance Minister talk about something. You need to think about this. Um, it's not about... Uh, making money or, or whatever it's about like okay this is our future at stake here right now literally our future at stake and yeah I think that's pretty much it <laughs> anything you want to add <sighs> that's all for now I uh, guess okay so so what's going to happen next right so you're saying that the MB will, will talk um uh Finance Minister has not said anything after the pull-out. Finance Minister has not said anything after after thirty first, right? Yes, he hasn't said anything yet. So I feel like um maybe next week, again, this is the first of September. So maybe next week or maybe tomorrow there'll be an announcement. Maybe there'll be a statement. I feel that I feel that's coming. I, obviously they were going to make a statement they need to answer something and then also we I mean, can they don't have to and we, we can expect uh, the communication minister giving us a new deadline maybe 30th September 30th to say September. that everything is on track yeah by the end of this year no because he said that Malaysians will be able to experience 5G by end of September that's what he said but that is BS right because they can already experience 5G okay here's why I think la, to make it look like it's moving right mm. 
probably they would extend free data or free pilot because you know when DMB first started in December, they offer telcos like six months of free uh, 4G access. Mm. Get, I mean, sign up mm. and then we give you like free access until a certain date. Yep. And they've extended that until 30th of June. Mm. I believe uh, Yes is still enjoying the free access trial from DMB mm. until today. Yep. So I've got a feeling that maybe they're saying, okay, now no strings attached. Don't need sign. I give you free first just to give the illusion that yeah, the telcos are on board offering 5G. Okay, so they might do that. My hunch is that makes them lose even more leverage. That makes them look even more desperate. And that makes them lose power. They cannot then then twist arm um, uh, for the telcos, for the four telcos, hey, you need to pay no, the money now. Okay, how are they going to twist arms? I could, because for, for me, this is a very regular environment. Mm. And it's gonna look bad to the to the industry. Like, hey, how, why is Malaysia doing this to you know commercial companies? Okay, one option they can do to mm. twist arm is to maybe to hurt them badly. One way is I don't know maybe catch them with the current spectrum to really squeeze them to sign. But to do that means that they are disrupting us, the consumer. Yes, and then we will report to MCMC, and then MCMC will say, okay, go to your telco, and then telco will say, look, I cannot do anything because MCMC. So it's like a a negative loop that that what? has yeah because I, the thing is I'm not surprised you know why because remember when um when the telcos received a spectrum from the MCMC like mm. the 18 megahertz 26 megahertz 26 2600 megahertz mm. the spectrum for 4G mm. all these spectrum are technology neutral which mm. means you get a spectrum you can use it for 3G 4G or 5G and beyond mm. no issue mm. but the MCMC quietly changed those terms last mm. year mm. to say that uh, these telcos right now, you only can deploy to 4G. Mm. 5G, you're not allowed to do 5G. Mm. Even though the spectrum allows them to do 5G, mm. but Mancom says, no, you can't because that will disrupt the single whole cell network. So the government can do that. Yeah, but so I'm not surprised they can do even more evil how, stuff how, to the telcos. How far, how far can they go though? I mean, they can't say that, oh, you cannot deploy 4G anymore. Well, okay. Firstly, the spectrum belongs to the government, not to the telcos. So they kind of have the right to pull it back for some for any other reasons. They can pull it back if the telco has not fulfilled uh, their requirements. And as far as I know, maybe there's only one telco that has not fulfilled their requirements, and that telco has like quite a lot of spectrum. But for me, it's, they can use any reason, right? Like if they, they if they can remove the spectrum neutrality from the agreement they wish they signed and paid for. Why? What's Anything stopping them? Can happen. Anything can happen. Mm. So I got a feeling they will try to find a way to squeeze the telcos from signing it. I mean, that's scary, lah. That's scary. It's, uh, it sends a bad signal to investors, there's right? Like no, there's no rule of law. Anything the government can do. Yeah. Then the question is, why are they doing it? And I don't have an answer to that. Yeah. I mean, the thought of it is scary, but I, we've seen it happening in terms of the technology neutral of the spectrum. Yeah. So what? What more they can't do? Mm. Okay. Uh, and on that uh, bombshell if you want to listen to us we are also available on podcast <laughs> so just search for uh, let's talk about Sorry Chin Chow on uh, any of your favourite podcast platforms and we're there if you are listening to us on podcast and, you've, and you like the show give us a thumbs uh, give us a 5 star rating uh, share uh, subscribe and share the show to your friends or anybody you think would find uh, the topic that we talked about uh, interesting if you're watching us on YouTube, uh, thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up if you like the show. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And, uh, of course, your comments, right? I'm sure you also have thoughts and opinions on what's going on uh, with the current development. Um, let us know what you think. Uh, we love uh, reading from reading your comments and, and, and knowing what you think about this topic. Similarly to those of you who are listening to us on podcast, you can also drop us a voice note at let's talk about at soyachinchow.com. Yes. And if uh and we we, we, we really want to hear from you guys. So we haven't gotten a voice note since yep. uh uh yet. So um be the first. I mean, you know, that's really great. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. This is me, I mean. And it's Alex. Catch you guys later. Bye. Bye.